morning. Good morning. Good morning. You want to go ahead and stand to your feet? I already stand. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. I already am. I think it's just really cool that Valentine's Day is on Sunday at church. <laughs> yeah.
You will never
Sometimes when we hear that, often times when we hear that, we hear, well, the faith of a mustard seed, that's tiny, that, that's, that's little, I don't need much faith. Well, that, that, that preaches, but not completely accurate. See, in Isaiah chapter 40 is the greatest chapter that really describes the, the physical attributes of God, the size of God. It's, it, it says in Isaiah 40 that, that in, the, in, in the span of his hand, in his hand, he holds all the water of the earth. It, it says that, that all the nations next to him appear to be a speck of dust. So it's, it, it's a great picture of the size. And then, and then it says the, the individual, it goes from nations to the one that comes to God is but, are you ready for this? piece of sand. So if I am the size of a piece of sand, I debate with you that a mustard seed is bigger than I am. So Jesus was saying, you've got to have faith that's much larger than you are. Anyone can believe for the small stuff. When was the last time we believed for something bigger than mustard seed faith that says, man, i got to have a move of God in my life. I, I, can't, I can't be the same anymore. I, I can't be mediocre. I can't, I, I, can't, I can't play this any longer. I'm bored. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm, I'm doubting. I'm, I need a touch today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the band to take us through how that Jesus, I love you one more time and 
I want to ask you, whatever you're comfortable with, maybe you'll want to kneel at your chair or raise your hands or, or sit down or, or even come to the front. I don't know, but let's just take a mustard seed step. We've got to have a touch from him. The truth of the matter is we can gather in here, but if we don't have his anointing, if we don't have all of him, what a waste. Just another social club. I'm not into that. I'm into knowing him and making him known. So as, the, as Abby leads us again through this, I just ask you, hey, whatever, whatever works for you to go to that next level of just a couple, a couple minutes of worship. So lifting your hands or kneeling in your chair, coming to the front, whatever, whatever it would be. Let's just take two minutes, be bold, and get some mustard seed faith that we would this morning experience him a new, just a new, a new level. Abby, please take this.
when we leave here today, we, we know you more and we yearn to make you known. That, that would keep us fresh, alive, and that today would not just be a religious tradition, that today would be an experience in the presence of the only one that's good. So let your fresh anointing be in this place. Bless the children's ministry and bless all that we do today. Let everything we do give you praise. Just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. God bless you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm glad you're all excited about it. <laughs> Happy reason for Hallmark to make money day. Come on, let's not be like that. It's a good good to celebrate your Valentine. And every guy in the house just missed his chance. <laughs> no, nope, too late. Don't, no, no, no. You missed it. You missed it. Um, wow, what a fresh morning. I don't know if I'd rather be anyplace else. Nope. Good worship. Okay, so um, <laughs> I need to talk about two details and then we're going to get into the word. Um, Normally, I would have you open your Bibles, and we would work our way through a scripture. Today, we're going to look at a lot of different verses. Um, I figure the best way to make the point that God is saying to us is to let God say it to us. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we're going to look at a lot of scripture and let him, let him speak to us. Uh, guys, tomorrow night, Monday night, is our Zoom, uh, our Zoom study on Philippians. Uh, we have read for, through Philippians 1. And uh, be ready to just talk about that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'll be emailing a link out. And then secondly, if you'd like to give to City Church, uh, we have multiple ways. You can give online, citychurchaz.com. Or out in the foyer, there's an iPad kiosk you can use. Or there's big orange boxes in the back. You can put very large checks in. So we're, we're good with that. Amen. Amen. That's a, that's a great amen right there. That's a... That's a great amen, and we'll take the time. If you need to write a lot of zeros, we'll wait. We're good. Um, we're, we're on a journey that we started last week, loving leads to giving, and, and each February I, I talk about giving, um, loving leads to giving, and so one of the questions is why do you talk about it every February? Well, because on average we attend, the, the average church attendance right now is 1.3 times a month, and so uh, on the average church attender, you only heard 25% of last year's message, and odds are you don't remember that. Yeah. You don't remember last Tuesday's lunch. Yeah, I promise you don't remember a year ago sermon. Um, so so we're, on, we're on part two of loving leads to giving, and, and just this year, um, I really, and, and convinced that the Lord put in my heart for us to be deliberate. And I haven't talked a lot about that <clears throat> since we started the new year, but there's a, there's a deliberateness we're going to go through and just really, um, I, I need to help be deliberate. I need to be deliberate in, in, in discipling you. I need to be deliberate in, in, allowing you, in helping you grow every way you can possibly grow. I need to be deliberate in serving you. I need to be deliberate in allowing you opportunities to serve. There needs to be a deliberateness about us in 2021. Uh, 2020 kind of got laid by the wayside, and I'm not in this year with an urgency in terms of trying to make up the difference, but I am into this year with, a, with a, a, an urgency of knowing him and making him known. Um, I, just going through, thinking about how quickly, how quickly this pandemic put the entire globe into a state of fear. Right. Just overnight. And it doesn't matter where you stand on it. You believe a drill, you don't believe a drill, you want to wear a mask, you don't want to wear a mask, CDC, no CDC. I don't care where you stand. We don't have time to debate that. We need to know Jesus and make him known because at the snap of a finger, this globe can change directions. Right. And so we've got to get delivered about knowing him and making him known. We've got to be delivered about that. So in this journey for 2021, I'm going to probably make some statements that will, well, hurt. <clears throat> But there's two beauties of that. Number one is Jesus says, you have to forgive me. <laughs> and 
number two, Jesus says, you have to forgive me. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be very, very deliberate in, in our communication, especially today. Um, to the, and so um, I, I want to help us develop a heart, a, a heart, and the way we develop a heart is one step at a time. We talked about that in the past, that the way a developer develops that subdivision is one step at a time, getting the permits and setting the, the civil engineering and, and going through that whole process and then digging the holes, and it's, it's one step at a time. And we need to develop a heart and so in the next year, I'm going to help us develop a heart. And this series is about helping us develop a heart of handling God's resources. Because right. it's all God's anyway. It's all God's. It's all God's. <clears throat> and, and, and there's a part of us that we can go, yeah, amen, it's all God's. But there's another part of us that goes, oh, no, 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 no. I put in the 40 hours. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's talk about this. <clears throat> but the truth of the matter is, it, it is all his. And we have this, we have this if, we, if we don't handle his resources correctly, here, here's, here's one of the reasons why. We, we have this, this wrong idea in Christianity that once, once we meet Jesus, then, then once we meet Jesus, then we're called to go to heaven, which is not true. We're not called to go to heaven until we die. When you die, you're called. We are called to know him and then bring heaven to earth. Okay, we're supposed to bring heaven to earth. And that's why he gives us resources. We meet him, and, and not so we can just bail, but so that we can bring heaven to earth. And that's, that's what I really want to talk about today, is, is with, with the resources of, of bringing heaven to earth. Okay? Um, because we're not called to go somewhere. We're called to make him known. I want us, we're going to land on a, a, a Hebrew word today, and we're, I'm going to use it a lot, and I hope you go out of here with it kind of ingrained into your thinking of where we go. So I, I want you to learn, the, the word for righteous, the word, the Hebrew word for righteous is sadak. Do, do I have that? Sadak. That's, 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 that's how it's written and the pronunciation, and it means to be righteous. If you're sadak, you're righteous, okay? That's important. The second piece is more important, it's sadaka. Okay, sadaka, can we get the next one up there? Sadaka. Sadaka is righteous acts of prosperity or righteous acts of generosity. So here's the deal. Sadak and Sadaka. You can't be Sadak, righteous, and separate, not be Sadaka. They're one. You, you, the two cannot exist separately. You, you can't be righteous and not be generous. Amen. That, that's what's being said here. Sadak is righteous. Sadaka is generosity. You can't be righteous. You cannot be righteous and not be generous. Okay. You with me? Yep. It, it, so we're, we're going to look at, at, at how, how this works through Scripture and, 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 and learn to bring heaven on earth through Sadaka. Okay? Sadaka. Sadaka. We're, we're going to watch those through today. Um, so, so we are to establish his kingdom on earth. And so oftentimes I'm asked, well, how do we do that? But well, we're going to take a quick look at how we do that. Luke chapter 11 starts out like this. It says, now Jesus was praying in a certain place. So I just want to land on that for just a moment. Kind of a side note, segue, rabbit trail. Jesus was praying in a certain place. I just want to say this, and I, I warned you earlier, I'm probably going to say some things this year that will hurt. Here's one of them. If you don't have a time and a place, Jesus was praying in a certain place. If you do not have a time and a place that you meet with him, you do not have a consistent prayer life. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in the religiosity of that, but it's truth. Jesus had a time and a place. And let me, let me just quickly prove it to you. Remember the Last Supper? Judas left the Last Supper before everybody else, remember? Mm -hmm. right. Jesus called him out and he bailed before everybody else. And then after that, Jesus and the other 11 left and went. And how did Judas know where to find him? Because Jesus had a time and a place. My family would tell you, they know I have a time and a place. My time is when I first get up in the morning. Irrelevant of what time I get up, when I get up, first thing I do is read and pray. And I have a place. I have a time and a place. If there's not a time and a place, you can't possibly get to know him well. If your time and a place, let me just be, wow. If, if your time and your place, let me say it this way. I know this might stink, but if you, you love me. If your time and your place is while you're driving, 
Try, if you're married, try having conversations with your wife. And the only time you guys talk is when you're doing something different. The only time you talk is when you're on your phone. Yeah, honey, yeah, I agree. Yep, sounds good. Let's do that. And, and that's what we, that's what we, we castigate our, our time with the Lord. Well, I pray, I pray while I'm doing dishes. Well, put them in the dishwasher, shut it, go pray. <laughs> if, and and you, you, we have to have a time and a place. And, and, and I want to be delivered about that. So Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now notice he didn't say teach us how to pray. It's important that we catch that. Teach us to pray. Watch this. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. See, here's the deal. The disciples saw a connection between the time with the Father and the power in his life. There was a, they realized there's a connection. We, we need to learn to pray. We want that connection. We already know the how. We want to see the to. We want the connection of time with God equates power, results, peace. Okay, you, you with me? Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said to them, when you pray. So now we're going to look at Matthew, the parallel of what Jesus taught them to pray. I just, I, the, 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 in Matthew, it just gives it a little more, it expounds a little more. It, pray in this manner, Matthew 6, 9, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, which I love that word, our, that means he's everybody's dad. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Watch this. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So here's the deal. We gotta remember, we call this the Lord's Prayer, but this isn't the Lord's Prayer. This is yours and my prayer, because we're about to read that in this prayer, he says, Please forgive me. Jesus didn't need to be forgiven, but he taught us how to pray to be forgiven. So it's really not his prayer, this is our prayer. So our prayer needs to be, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. This is you and I to pray this. Okay? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So watch this. How do I get his kingdom done, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? The next word, give. Yeah. The next word, give us this day, our daily bread. Now, we, we equate that to, well, that means that he's going to take care of my needs. That's true. That's true. But oftentimes the word bread to the Hebrew mindset meant healing. Give us this day our, what do we need to be healed from? Physical, spiritual, emotional. Not just provide my food. Give us this day our manna. Our daily manna. Amen. Manna was awesome. Amen. Do you know what the definition of manna was? The, this, this definition of manna. It's, the manna is defined as what is it? Isn't that cool? So can you imagine that when you get up in the morning and you're Hebrew and you're like, what is it? Exactly. <laughs> you're right. It is. So, give us this day our daily bread. Watch this. And oh, watch this. This is, this is the tough part. This is Sadaka. And forgive our debts as we forgive. That word as is not while I'm forgiving. That word as is forgive me of my debts just like I forgive. Amen. In the same manner I forgive. Ho, oh, oh, ho! There's a tall order. Forgive me just like the way I forgive. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, which is a great picture of the Trinity. Kingdom of the Father, power of the Spirit, glory of the Son. It's all yours. And we need to bring it on earth. Amen. It's a great word. I assure you that City Church, we give. I, I, I looked at our, our year-end records and, and uh, City Church, we gave uh, all through through supporting our district and benevolence and missions, uh, adding them all up, we gave, we gave almost $14,000 away last year in, in, two, in 2020. I want to I do more this year, but that's awesome right there. I also wanted to say this to you as your pastor, and I assure you of this, that I went back and looked at mine and Tracy's tax records, and for the last several years, we have, we have given between 13 and 15% of our income. So I'm not teaching something we don't do personally or collectively. Amen. Thank you. So here's the deal. Jesus, we're supposed to bring heaven to earth. Jesus died to, to, or Jesus came to earth and then also sent Holy Spirit for what? To dwell among us, not to remove us. Jesus prayed that in John 17. 
Lord, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. I pray you give them strength to change the world. Amen. He came to dwell, to dwell among us. And, and so, listen, we're not called, listen, get this. We are not called to evacuate earth. We're called to occupy earth. Come on. And the way that we do that is how we steward what he owns, what he puts in our hands. And so we're, we're going to talk about that. And, and, and in the Hebrew mindset, knowing God is directly tied to how you treated people that have less than you. That, that was their measure of God. The, you, the, the more you knew God, the better you treated people that have less than you. Now, that's kind of a legalistic, uh, religious thing measure and it's true that I, I agree with that but at the same time I agree with that measurement the more of Jesus that's in you the more you act like Jesus Amen. Amen. the more you love the more you give that's just how Jesus works okay Amen. here we go ready three two one I thought I was gonna sneeze <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> what is that what happens when God sneezes like, who says, well, you bless you. <laughs> I have lost track. So our goal is not to get somewhere else, because if our goal is to get somewhere else, if our goal is to get somewhere else, it doesn't matter how I treat people. It, it, it's irrelevant. I just need to get somewhere else. That's, but Hebrews had a system, and it was called tzedakah. You, you cannot, you cannot be righteous and not give. You can't. It's one. Sadaka. It's righteous generosity. It's how it works together. So I'm going to give you a summary of tithe, okay? I'm going to give you a summary of tithe, and we're going to land on one piece and, and not on, on, on the rest, but on the system of their sadaka, a summary of, of, of their, their giving. So uh, not today, not now, but uh, we'll tell you in, in uh, Malachi 3 8, it says that you rob me of tithes, plural. And offerings, plural. There's more than one tithe. There's more than one offering. Okay? Um, you're robbing of tithes and offerings, plural. Okay? Tithe is 10%. If there's more than one tithe, there's three tithes. And offerings, that's when you give above and beyond the tithe. So he says you're, you're robbing me of tithes, plural, and offerings. We're going to talk about tithes, three tithes. We're going to land on one of the three, the third, but we're not. But I'm going to tell you about all three tithes. Okay? So the first tithe is, is one fortieth of your income, and that's called teruma. It's all called teruma. Now, I'm not going to talk about teruma today. I'm going to talk about teruma on Wednesday night at Spencer's Coffee Shop. And there's a reason for that is because that teaching of teruma is pretty, it's really in-depth. It can take some time. And um, I, I choose to not ever teach that publicly. I choose to, to teach it privately because it can be misunderstood and, and twisted if it's not taught well. So that's that's a that's a that's an advertisement to see a Wednesday night at Spencer's coffee shop. And we will talk about Teruma. Teruma is the first tithe. It's one fortieth of your, your income. And that would go to the high priest or your or, or or your pastor. The, the, the high priest or your pastor is, is defined in the Hebrew mindset as the person willing to live among you and introduce you to God. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> and so the Teruma went to that person. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the first fruits of the first, the first fruits can only be blessed when the first of the first fruits became Teruma. And, and I know I said I'm not going to teach on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this is the first step. The second, the second tithe is, is, is 10% to the church. That's called Maser. M A A S E R. That's called Maser. So your first tithe is Teruma, your second tithe is Maser, and that's, that's 10% that goes to the church. The third tithe is called uh, is called Maser Shenai. Maser Shenai is to is you tithe to you. It's for your savings. You put it in your savings. Ten percent you put in your savings. Wednesday night I'll show you how to do the math. Don't do the math today. Stay with me because here's what'll happen. You start doing the math. Checkbook will come out. You start balancing it. You'll pay a bill and we'll be done. Okay. Don't do the math today. Third tithe is, is, is Maser Shani, that's tithe to your, yourself. Now, the thing about the self-tithe is every fourth self-tithe they would give to the poor. Every fourth, every fourth Maser Shani would go to the poor. 
every fourth. Okay, here's the example. We'll talk about it more Wednesday night. Square, circle, what did Jesus say not to do? Don't harvest the corners. Why? Because it goes to the poor. Okay? Amen. You follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, now, we're talking a little about tithe, talking about generosity. So, I do want to address this. For those of you that would like to argue of whether tithe is New Testament or Old Testament, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so, tithe itself was before the law, by the way. It was, it was The tithe, the principle of tithe happened before the law was ever written. And Jesus refers to the tithe, but Jesus really sets another standard. Jesus' standard of giving is even higher than tithe. Je Jesus says, Give the way you'd want to give it to. Mm. We'll just move forward. <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Even when I'm teaching today, I'm not going to argue Old Testament, New Testament. I believe that the way to live the best life is, is to bless your church. Savings. Take care of your responsibilities. Like, or take care of the poor. Church, savings, the poor. And then take care of Ford Motor Credit, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, Sears. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so instead of arguing about it, let's, let's get serious about knowing God and making him known. Let's get serious about living sadaka. You cannot be righteous and not be generous. I want to drill that in today. You cannot. You cannot. So we're going to talk about generosity and righteousness and how they're connected in the Word. Now listen, I'm, I'm, listen you, you can Google this or trust me. There's 2,106 scriptures that connect generosity and righteousness. 2,106 that connect generosity <coughs> and righteousness. We're going to read them all today. Right? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Here's the deal. 2,106 <coughs> verses that connect righteousness and tithe. That's more than there are verses on, on prayer, heaven, hell, or fasting added together. There's 2,106 scriptures on righteousness and generosity. It's important that we understand Sadaka. Okay. You guys are not having fun today. It's Valentine's Day, so we should go get ice cream or something. So we're going to walk through some scripture, just, to, just a few verses, to show you righteousness and generosity connected. So we can let God's word speak for itself. Because we, we want to bring heaven to earth. Is that, that's what we want to do. Okay? And so listen, Psalms 37, 25. Here we go. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous. See the word? The righteous. See the word righteous? Mm -hmm. Is it in there? Mm -hmm. Okay? I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He, who's he? The righteous guy is ever lending generously. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. This speaks generations. This is what you're doing for your children. When you live sadaka, you're letting your children be blessed. This is a generational connection between righteousness and generosity that lasts generations. Amen. Okay? I've never seen the righteous forsaken, but I do see him lending generously. Why is he not forsaken? Because he's lending generously. And oh, and by the way, his children, they're blessed. Amen. Okay? You with me? Mm -hmm. Psalms 1, 112, verse 5. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. Generosity, righteous, connected. You see it in there? Sadaka, right in front of us. It is well with the man who deals generously, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will not be moved. Isaiah, this is a little bit longer, we're going to work through this. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. When you spread out your hands, in the Hebrew mind, that was giving a gift. Okay, when you spread out your hands, 
I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. So here's the deal. Isaiah is talking to the church. He's not talking to the unchurch. This, this prophet, prophetic word is to the followers of, of Christ. This is to the church. When you make prayers, okay? Uh, when you open your hands and make prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Watch. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Righteousness. See that? Remove evil deeds. Cease to do evil. Verse 17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Get right. You have to give. Right. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. It's salvation. Though they are red with crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, conditional, you shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be, you shall be, got this, you shall be eaten by the sword. That's a weird bunch of words, isn't it? You'll be eaten by the sword. Here's what the sword is, a sifting. They would sift out what to keep and what to throw away. And if you, if you try to live righteous without being generous, you will be sifted. You'll be, you'll be revealed. You cannot, you cannot be sadaka and not be sadaka. You, you can't. Are, are you getting it? Yep. I know I keep saying it, but we got to be delivered about this. Luke chapter 3, verse 7. You okay we just keep reading some Bible? Mm -hmm. So this is John the Baptist talking. Remember John the Baptist? He was the worst church leader in the world. We're going to read it. These guys come to, come to his church where he's baptizing people. They come to his church and he goes, you are a basket of vipers. <laughs> in fact, you're fatherless. There, we have a word for that, the B word. Like, you're, you're, you're a bunch of B words. <laughs> and you're a basket of vipers. Welcome to City Church. <laughs> John wasn't really good about building his church. So John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits, plural, in keeping with repentance. Sadaq. Bear fruits, keeping with Sadaq. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise the children from Abraham. Even now the axe, the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit, listen, every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit, he's talking about repentance, he's talking about being sadak. every tree, tree that does not bear sadaka is cut down and thrown into the fire. <coughs> and the crowds asks, what should we do? What do we do so that we can live Sadaka. And he says, whoever has two tunics is to share it with the one who has none. And whoever has food, do likewise. As soon as you have Sadaka or Sadak, you have to have Sadaka. What do we do? Start showing your Sadaka. You get Sadak, you go Sadaka. That was John the Baptist's first sermon. You cannot be one without the other. James 1.26. If anyone thinks he is religious, and then this would, this would translate into righteous. If anyone thinks he is religious or righteous and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart. You see that? A little side note there. What deceives your heart? Your own tongue. You can tell yourself all day long a lie and begin to believe it. Mm -hmm. Your own tongue deceives your heart. If anyone thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion, this person's righteousness is worthless. Religion or righteousness that is pure, that is undefiled before God, is this. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction, to keep oneself unstained from the world system. Sadaka. Undefiled Sadak is one who is generous. Sadaka. Unstained from the world. 
So here's what it means by unstained from the world. When the, when the word world is used in scripture, like for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that word world is best defined as a system that's designed for mankind to live without God. Okay? That's the world. The world is a system designed for mankind to live without God. And so that's, that's, that's what he's saying here, is don't be stained by a system that makes you think that you can live without God. If you have a righteous relationship with God, there has to be sadaka. And don't, don't get stained by the world that says you don't need to be sadaka. You can be a good person and not give. That's what he's saying here. Don't be fooled by that. You, it can't it can happen. Okay? Deuteronomy 24, 17. You shall not pervert justice do the stranger or the fatherless, nor take a widow's garment. See, he's talking about Sadaka up front. You shall not pervert justice do the stranger or the fatherless, nor take a widow's garment as pledge. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt. You shall remember that you weren't righteous. And the Lord your God redeemed you. Salvation. Sadak. Redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. What thing? Don't pervert justice to the stranger or the fatherless. Don't take a widow's garment and pledge. I command you to do this thing. If you're going to be Sadak, you have to be Sadaka. Amen. I know it's a little different teaching, but it's just easier if I let God do it, and then you can be mad at him. <laughs> Second Corinthians 9 6. I love the way that Paul starts this. I love this. He says, he says, the point is this. Like he said, you, okay, just stop. Just stop. Look, the point is this. Remember this so a little history on 2 Corinthians. So we've talked about it a little bit over the last few weeks. So Corinthians, there's 1 Corinthians and then the 2 Corinthians. But really, before 1 Corinthians, there's another letter to the Corinthians that we don't know what it said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, in reference to the letter that I wrote you, so that letter's gone. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says, in reference to the letter you wrote me, I'm so, there's, there's 1 Corinthians that we don't really know where it is. It's like God said, that's not good enough. They're not putting it in. And then there's the return letter from the Corinthians, and then there's 1 Corinthians, and this is 2 Corinthians. So this is the third letter Paul's written, and he says, oh, look, the point is this. Okay, but there's that third letter. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. That word compulsion, by the way, means manipulation. Okay? And manipulation is witchcraft. Right. Okay? So I will never manipulate you. I will never sell you a piece of garment that if you take it home and put it on your head, you won't get sick. That's, that's kind of the manipulation fake thing. You see that? You buy, send me money, we'll send you this garment. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I'll stay. Each one must decide his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Watch this. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Now let me make two comments on that. Even if you're a ticked off giver, you can still give. <laughs> because you will become a cheerful giver. Right. You can't act like God and not start being like God. And the reason he likes a cheerful giver, here's why he likes it's, he likes all givers. But why does he emphasize a cheerful giver? Because that's his character. He cheerfully gives. And when he sees us acting like him, he's like, oh yeah. That's my boy. That's my cheerful giver right there. That's my guy. He's, he's, he's so proud when he sees cheerful giving. He's like, now you're acting like me. How many dads, how many dads have you ever said that with a smile? <laughs> <laughs> oh good, you're acting like me. <laughs> Don't tell your mother. <laughs> he loves a cheerful giver. He's got his eye on us. And he loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all, watch this, all grace. That's important. All grace. 
How do we get saved? By grace. How do we get cleansed? By grace. How do we enter a relationship with God? By grace. This is, Paul says, this is the point. By grace. He'll make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Salvation, sadak, abound in every good work, sadaka. He gives you all grace, sadak, so that you can sadaka. Amen. As it is written, he distributed freely. He has given to the poor his righteousness, his sadak endures forever. That's good news. That's good news today. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Here's, here's why we kind of struggle with, with this teaching. Even, even me, I, I had to work through some of this. And, 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 mo and a big part of this teaching came from a super close friend of mine named Shane Willard, who has hours of teaching on Sadat. <clears throat> I had to change my mind frame. And I think today we may have to change our mind frame. Because so often we define righteousness by what we don't do. I don't smoke. I don't chew. I don't hang out with girls that do. I don't lie. I don't speed. I don't skip church. I, and righteousness was never to be defined by what I don't. Righteousness is defined by what I do. My sadak is defined by my sadaka, not by what I don't do. Amen. If my righteousness is defined by what I don't do, then my righteousness is no longer grace. It's called religion. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I'm trying to function in religion, I promise you, you, you listen, and we'll talk about this next week as we wrap up the series, but you can, you can give 10% and not be tithing. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's based on performance. If it's religion, we'll talk about that next week. But my, my sadak can never be defined by what I don't do. Never, ever. My sadak is defined by my sadaka. Amen. Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. Last scripture. Last scripture. There's 2,000 of these. This will be enough for today. <laughs> This is important that we get this. We really make mistakes on this one right here. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. He who supplies what? I want you to get this. He who supplies what? And I want you all to get this. Some of you aren't playing fair. He who supplies Wow. I'm glad I'm not a school teacher. I don't know how you do it. Pay attention. Okay. He who supplies seed to the sower. That's you and I. We are the sowers. We don't supply the seed. We're the sowers. He who supplies seed, this is important, to the sower. I want you to get this. And, say and. and. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread. Now it's important that we get that. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread will supply and multiply your seed for sowing. Here's what we do. We eat both the bread and the seed. Don't eat the seed. He gives you bread for eating, and he gives you seed for sowing. We eat the seed. It's called overspending. It's called no discipline to tithe. It's called not believing in God. It's called living in fear. It's called I've never had the habit. It's called the church just wants my money. No, they don't. God does, because that's connected to your heart. He don't eat your seed. Amen. He gives you seed and bread. He gives you seed for sowing and bread for food. Amen. That's either true or it's not. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your sadak. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. You will be 
This is so awesome. Abby, if you get to come up, because if you don't, I'll just keep going. <laughs> you will be enriched. Watch this. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. Can I reread this to you? He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your sadaka. You will be enriched in every way to have sadaka. Amen. Amen. And every one of these is based on if. We read it over and over. If you do what I said, you'll see the harvest. If you live sadaka, you'll see an increase. But if you're eating your seed and your bread, there's no multiplication. Amen. Listen to this statistic I, I read this week. Forbes 400 put out put this out. The top, listen to me, the top, I want to get the number right, 3.2. The top 400 uh, wealthiest people in the world, the top 400 wealthiest people in the world. So here's my question before I tell you this. How much is enough? Right. How much is enough? The top 400, Forbes 400 says the top 400 wealthiest people in the world combined have $3.2 trillion. Now, that's a little hard to imagine. I don't know what 3.2 trillion looks like. I'm praying for a couple hundred. Right. 400, the 400 wealthiest people in the world control 3.2, or have together, 3.2 trillion dollars. So I took it a little further and spent some time this week. 3.2 trillion dollars would, is enough to vaccinate every person on the planet. It is enough to supply fresh water to every person on the planet and vaccinate every person on the planet. It is enough, is enough to provide health care to every person 10 years old and younger and provide fresh water for everyone on the planet and vaccinate every person on the planet. It is enough to begin a farming system to produce enough food to feed the planet and bring health care to everyone under 10 and bring fresh water to every person on the planet, and vaccinate every person on the planet, and each of those 400 will have billions left over. That's how much 3.2 trillion is. But let's flip it. Can we stop saying that God hasn't supplied? Right. He's supplied. We're just hoarding. Right. Every part, every need on this planet is available. If we'll do Sadaka. And we could throw stones at those 400 all we want. Imagine what would happen if the top 400,000 got together. Imagine what would happen if the top 400 million got together and lived Sadaka. Roughly, there's 7 billion people on this planet. 10% would be 7 million, right? You with me? Yep. Do the math. Roughly 7 billion people. Engineer, am I right? Say again. I was doing the math, and then you... I needed that. I needed help. Yeah. <laughs> 7 billion on the planet. 10%. 1%, therefore, would be what? 700,000. Right. If you drove here today in a car, you are part of the top 700,000 wealthiest people on the planet. Right. Right. If you have another car at home, you are in the top 400,000. wealthiest people on the planet. Can you imagine if the top 400,000 people on the planet started living Sadaka? Hmm. And we are part of that people. And I'm, I don't know. I'm a guest. Y'all own two cars. It's kind of revealing, isn't it? To put in those terms. But more important than that is, where's our heart today? Loving leads to giving. 
do I love? I love Jesus. That's the biggest question of all. I love Jesus. And if I love Jesus, I start acting like Jesus and loving these different. Amen. Sadak leads to Sadak. Will you stand with me? scriptures, you can, I'll be, I'll be happy to send them to you. Email you my notes, whatever. And oftentimes when the message like this is given, we leave here going, I, we got to start giving more. Amen. You do. If that's, if that's what the Holy Spirit is telling you, don't disobey. Don't disobey. But let's not jump to that yet. Let's take a minute and make sure we're in love with Jesus. And then Sadaka. Abby lead us to a song. I'll come up and close. But during this song, can we just, and Lord, I just want to fall in love with you. I want to be like the Apostle Paul that said, I didn't come to you with persuasive words of man. I want that today. I didn't come to you today with a persuasive word. I came to you today empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak to you about being delivered about Sadaka.
bring Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, church, God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great Valentine's Day. Thank you for being here today. You guys are amazing.